Who's this little cutie? What Prince Harry said when he met an adorable baby in Sydney, after Meghan fawned over the little girl. Father-to-be Prince Harry has once again proven he is a natural with children. The Duke of Sussex met the adorable baby daughter of Australian singer Missy Higgins at a reception in Sydney on Tuesday afternoon, asking who's this little cutie. His wife, a glowing Meghan Markle, was also seen fawning over Ms Higgins' baby girl Luna as she chatted to the singer. The Duchess of Sussex made a beeline for Ms Higgins, admiring her baby and telling the songtress she and Prince Harry were excited to join the club. Ms Higgins later described Meghan as a sweetheart and added Prince Harry was gorgeous too, a real charmer. What an honor to meet the beautiful Duchess today. Ms Higgins posted on Instagram on Tuesday alongside two photos of her cradling her daughter and meeting Meghan. She was such a sweetheart. I said I felt sorry for her having to do all these meet and greets while four months pregnant. What a trooper. Prince Harry was gorgeous too, a real charmer. He squeezed Luna's legs and said who's this little cutie? Looking forward to telling Luna she slept through it all one day. Meghan who was wearing a $2,555 forest green shirt gown by American designer Brandon Maxwell, revealed that she was expecting a baby less than 24 hours earlier. Governor General Peter Cosgrove welcomed Prince Harry and the Duchess of Sussex to Australia for the first time, joking with Meghan her husband of five months had become almost the son of Australia. We have been very anxious to have you here so we could adopt you as well. He told the royal couple at a reception at Admiralty House on Tuesday afternoon. Sir Peter congratulated the Duke and Duchess of Sussex on the news they were expecting their first baby. Meghan mingled with guests at the get-together in Admiralty House, shortly after Prince Harry gave a speech thanking Australia for their hospitality and his excitement at being back in the country. Good day, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. It is obviously great to be back in Australia, he said. We are delighted to be here and really impressed to see you serving beer and tea at an afternoon reception, in true Aussie style. You will also notice we had a roof on our boat earlier after last year's downpour and luckily Sydney's sun is shining today. So thank you for organizing the weather. Thank you for the incredibly warm welcome and the chance to meet so many Aussies from all walks of life. And we also genuinely couldn't think of a better place to announce the upcoming baby be it a boy or a girl. What an exciting time. I've been so happy, Meghan told the crowds on her first Cindy walkabout. Earlier that day, the couple received their first baby gifts as they met with Governor General Sir Peter Cosgrove, Ugg Boots and a stuffed kangaroo with a joey in the pouch. The Duke and Duchess then travelled to Taronga Zoo to officially open the Taronga Institute of Science and Learning. At the zoo, the couple were invited to stroke two koalas and their joeys, who were named Harry and Meghan in honor of the royal wedding in May. The Duchess called the animals so, so sweet, shyly touching a koala named Ruby who sat sleepily on a lower branch in the small, open enclosure. The Duke was more forthcoming, reaching to pet the koala with the encouragement of keepers, and admiring their healthy coats and quizzing keeper Susie McNamara about their diet and sleeping habits. Shortly before 1 p.m., Harry and Meghan spent more than their scheduled 20 minutes meeting and greeting the incredibly excited locals as royal baby fever reached the city. The Opera House walkabout was the first opportunity for the public to interact with the couple, and to be the first to congratulate them after Kensington Palace announced Meghan's pregnancy on Monday night. Inside the building, Meghan and Harry watched a rehearsal of Spirit 2018 by the Bangra Dance Theatre an internationally acclaimed Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander modern dance company. They entered to the first performance black that portrays the ochre color of the clay that the dancers would normally be painted in. A group of male dancers performed a powerful dance where they were lifted on each other's shoulders. Harry really got into the performance, tapping his feet and nodding his head. Another dance was white with female dancers again to symbolize the paint worn in connection to the Australian earth. Meghan chatted to Bangri's director Philippe Majid as he talked her through the scenes. The final scene the call was about cleansing someone's sorrow. The troupe's 18 dancers belonged to the company and they all chatted to Meghan and Harry after the performance. Chairman Michael McDaniel addressed the couple, 
stop for a moment and cast our minds to the original owners of this land. We tell stories that enrich our nation and draw our tradition from 2,000 generations. We share that with the community and the world. Bengra Dance Theatre is in its 29th year. We strive to a more inclusive culture and one that has Aboriginal culture at its heart. I hope you've been moved. I know you've been moved from your comments and get a sense of the spirit. Shortly before 1 p.m., Harry and Meghan spent more than their scheduled 20 minutes meeting and greeting the incredibly excited locals as royal baby fever reached the city. After the short tour, the Duke and Duchess went to unveil a plaque commentating the opening of a research center. Departing, the couple were treated to a ride in a gondola, giving spectacular views over Cindy Harbour and allowing a glimpse of other animal enclosures, including a curious baby elephant, below. After the Duchess changed into flat shoes, they walked the short journey down a ramp and out of the zoo, catching a ferry, made private for the occasion, to the opera house surrounded by armed security.